Hey everybody, it's Adam here again, and I'm glad you're watching. You can see here, I got the Copic catalog, and they're the ones that make these high quality markers. They make some other stuff too. And you know, the cool thing is right now, Comic-Con's going on, and it's not too far from me, and they have a booth there. So I know they're gonna have all their products, and they could tell us a lot more about them. Because these are, aren't just markers, like, you know, regular ones that you might be used to. These are refillable and you can change the tips. There's a ton of colors and uh, they make fine pens, all kinds of stuff. So I know a bit about them, but I don't think I know enough. So I think we should go down there, see if we can pick their brains, see if they can uh, tell us more about these. You know, it's always best uh, if you're into art to learn as much as you can about all kinds of mediums. And because uh, you might be good at certain mediums and not even know it. So why don't we go and see how much we can learn about these markers and what they can tell us. Let's get out of here. <laughs> so we're, we're here at the Copic Marker booth and I thought this was really cool. There's so many more products than I knew they even sold. So, And uh, Marianne Walker was here telling me about everything and I thought this would be a good idea to kind of film it and so you guys can see everything about it. So anyway, we're just talking about the name. And so Copic markers, we call them Copic in North America, but in Australia or Europe, you'll hear it called Copic. And if you have the luck to go to Japan, then what you're going to find is that it's called Copicu. So you potato, potato, you can choose how you want to say it. Yeah, so that was interesting. So, so this originally is um, the manufacturers in Japan, right? Right, so Copic markers were discovered in Japan about 15, 20 years ago by a former head of an art department at the University of Oregon. He was on a business trip in Japan. He went into an art store and found these markers and said, oh my goodness, my animation students would love these. How do I get them into the United States? And so he began importing these markers specifically for animation students in the U.S. Wow, that's pretty cool. All right, so let's go through some of this stuff you have now. Scooch over here. Now let's just talk about the paper since it's right in front of us anyway. And uh, I know you said you had, let's get this over here. You were showing me this. All right, okay. so there are a lot of different papers available when you're doing marker renderings. And you need to have a paper that's appropriate for your rendering style as well as what it is that you're looking for as an output. A lot of people will see that we have an alcohol marker pad. This is a very thin, transparent paper that's ideal for quick sketches and renderings. So if you're doing an automotive design where you're doing that gestural, brushy look and you're not doing a lot of blending, but you need the transparency that you can see through to your initial sketches. Okay. So this is a fabulous paper for sketching and for quick rendering, but for detailed illustration, it's not going to give you the best results. For that, you want to go for a paper that is a little bit more absorbent. So we've got manga paper. This is what Japanese comic artists prefer. It's a nice thick paper, but it's very smooth on the surface. That allows your pen lines to come out very clean and crisp, even on your finest sizes. And when you erase your pencil work, it erases very cleanly. Softer American papers tend to rip up the paper or you get uneven line strokes. Right. Um, so, so in this, is it, I, I see, let's see, manuscript. Okay, so a manuscript And then paper, is this just bigger than that? Yes. Okay. So a manuscript paper is what they actually draw the black and white comics on. It has some barely visible blue lines. These don't show up when it's run through the printer. So you can rule, do your ruler marks, your measurements, get everything lined up with a blue pencil. That's what a lot of comic artists draw with, is instead of a plain uh, lead pencil, they use a blue pencil mm -hmm. so it doesn't show up when you photocopy. So oh, they okay. never have to go back and erase. So if you're drawing a black and white comic, this would be the paper to choose. If you're doing an illustration where it's just a standalone picture, you don't want any of the blue lines. So this is the same paper as this, except without the blue lines, it gives you very crisp coloration as well as um, very nice clean line strokes. 
And then we have sketchbooks. I love the Copic sketchbooks. Now what, what kind of paper is going to be in here? So this is going to be a little thicker than the other papers because it is a sketchbook. You uh -huh. want the durability. You want to be able to run some of your mixed media, your so pencils. Is it, is it just like drawing on this, just thicker? Yes. Okay. Yep. And it's going to give you vibrant colors, good blends, good saturation, and clean, crisp lines. These are So you would draw on any of these for stuff you want to keep? Yes. And frame? Okay. Yep. Absolutely. All right. So what is this? This is an even heavier weight paper. This comes from the Australian Copic distributor. He found this paper and it's a very thick, bright white. It's actually used a lot for paper crafters, rubber stampers. They'll make their pretty little cards, stamping onto this paper and coloring it in with markers. Okay, cool. And, uh, oh, okay, since we're right here, why don't you tell me about these uh, light, awesome light tables? All There's right. two sizes. We have two sizes of light tables. Um, I used to erase all of my pencil work when I was working or use a blue pencil. And I've killed twice as many trees since getting this light table because I love it so much. These are a very thin LED light table from Japan. I have one plugged in right over here. As you can see, it gives a very nice, even white light rounded corners so you're not gouging your arms in it as you're doing your outlining and it's very lightweight this one's been on now for about 10 or 15 minutes it's still cool to the touch mm -hmm. and um, it'll go through about three layers of bristol board so for any of your tracing work this is a wonderful option yeah cool so it has a little on off switch on the side and little on off switch it's led so this is going to last forever really mm -hmm. um, it's got a little feet. Here at the convention, this sells for 220. Regular price is going to be 299. Wow, so that's a good deal. So right, yeah. So there's two sizes. Now this would hold basically an see. 11 by 17. Yeah, this whole whole pad can yep. go on there. And man, that's I just love how thin it is. That is awesome. And then there's the, the smaller one here for an A4 size paper. Yep. Those are cool. Okay, so. This one, how much is this one? This um, one at the convention is $125. Regular price is $199. It's a pretty good discount. All right, now we're on this side. Now this is like, man, it's like a candy store in here. It is a candy store. I mean, look at all these flavors. I love it. You just want to touch them. So, yeah, I know. You know. So, so now, can you get, do you have, I know you have box sets. They, they go pretty small. Yeah, we have down to blending groups. So, we recommend when people buy these markers, you don't want to get just a red, a blue, or a green. You want to get two or three that are going to blend well together. So, you start with a lighter color. You add your darker color and up to your darkest color. You always go back and blend with the lighter of the colors. So we suggest when you buy a color, buy two or three in a color family. Right. And we've made it easy with little blending group sets, up to six piece sets, 24 piece set, 36 piece sets, all the way up to our 72 piece sets. Okay, so, so if, if let's say you're drawing a picture or whatever and you want this color, how would you automatically know the ones that would go in that family? How, how, do the, how do these little codes work? It's very easy. So when I was in art school, I actually didn't get along with the color theory teacher. She gave me a B in a different class, so I never <laughs> took color theory. <laughs> so it's amazing that I worked for this marker company and I never <laughs> passed color theory. That's awesome. Uh, I learned color theory from the markers because they have color theory built into their color number system. So right here, I've got the BG70s family. You'll notice the lightest in this family is BG70. A little bit darker, we're going to BG72, 75, and 78. Just looking at the caps, not the color on the caps, but the number on the caps, you can tell what is going to blend well together. So I know that anything that's in the BG70s family is going to feel the same. From the darkest tone, those are numbers that end in a nine, all the way down to the lightest tone, numbers that end in a zero. 
So, so are the colors in 10 digit steps? They are. Okay. So if I look at a different blue-green family, we'll notice over here I've got the BG Zeros family. You'll notice that these are a very vibrant blue-green, whereas this is a more gray blue-green getting into the BG 70s. So the first digit on each color tells you your saturation. So in all the color families except the earth tones, colors that start with a zero, a one, or a two are going to be very vibrant and saturated. Okay. Colors that are in the 70s, 80s, or 90s are going to be a lot more desaturated or have a lot more gray in them. But each of those 10 digit families are going to go from light to dark. Mm -hmm. So if you're starting your marker collection and you buy a B95 marker, and you think, you know what, I love this color, I need something lighter. Mm -hmm. Instantly you know that you can get a B91. Or you okay. love this color, you need something darker, you can go to a B97 or a B99. All right, so that's super convenient. Very I easy love, to understand. I love that system. Well, okay. It proves that you don't have to pass color theory no. to understand <laughs> that's color That's great. Now, now, how do the grays work? Is there, now, now there's warm grays and, and colder grays. Yeah. It's the same exact with the colors, right? Do, are they treated the same? Yeah. Sadly, we only have 46 shades of gray. We don't have 50 <laughs> shades of gray. So with the grays, we have your cool gray family, which are a very blue gray. Neutral, which is a true neutral gray. Toner gray, which is slightly warm, and then the warm gray, which is almost a beige. It's such a warm gray. Right, right. And each color family goes from zero to ten. Okay. All right, so so you can buy... Now, most people, when they start, they're not going to buy or, or might not have the money to buy the full set or all of them at once. So what's the minimum to get started? It really depends on what you're going to draw. Mm -hmm. But our most popular sets for this audience in particular are going to be six piece sets of the skin tones right. and the grays. These are our best sellers. You can't go wrong with your set of grays and everyone needs a good variety of skin tones to work with. <laughs> um, all the other colors, it really depends on what colors you, you're drawn to, what you like, if you want vibrant, if you want pastels but you really need a minimum of two colors per family to get the full effect of the markers. Okay. Yeah, and so does this cover, with this, how many skin tones do you like to choose from, or is six kind of it? And then you blend them together. My personal skin yeah. tone set <laughs> has over 36 markers okay. and I keep it in a separate little kit right. and I pull it out when I'm using my skin tones. <laughs> All right. There are only 358 colors to choose yeah. from. So it's kind of limiting sometimes. <laughs> do, you, do you ever think, do you ever want yes. a color that you don't have? Yes. You think, oh. Well, but you can buy empty markers and fill them. You can mix your own custom colors oh. from the ver from the ink bottles. Okay. Because all the markers are refillable. You buy the inks that you like, and then you mix them together, and you can create your own markers. So, so where's where's the blank markers then? Is that just zero right up there? No, that's the blender. Okay. So okay, so you would buy this, and, and then fill it in with your ink bottles and yes. try to yeah any thin ink um i have a set of food coloring markers that i airbrush cakes with that i've just taken empty sketch markers and filled them with food coloring <laughs> and it works none of my wedding guests have yeah. died yet <laughs> that's awesome all right let's see okay so here's more sets now what's the difference here we got black so these are our 25th anniversary set. So although we've only had the markers in the U.S. for about 15 years, they've been around for, um, it's now been about 27 or 28 years. They were developed in Japan, really so that they could work with photocopies for uh, commercial art purposes. So this is their 25th anniversary. It's a very special set of colors and it comes with a brush on one side and a fine point on the other. So these were just specially chosen colors to get a good variety for their 25th anniversary a year okay. or two ago. Cool, all right, and so the, you can get cases for them, or the mega case down the there. Mega case, that's from Germany. Now what's the biggest set you sell? Well, 
You, is it 72? It's the 72s, and if you buy a 72A, B, C, D, and E, then you've got all 358 colors. Okay, so yeah, Dan. Now this is this. These are different these, than those. Yes. So these are the sketch markers. These mm -hmm. are the most popular choice for the professionals. But if you're looking for an entry point on these markers, then we strongly suggest going with the Chow. They're a little bit smaller, so you'll have to refill sooner. But it's the same tips, the same ink, same high quality, just less ink to start with. Okay. Can you show us the difference? On So as you can see, it's a smaller body. They, they both have that nice brush tip. Okay. And they both have a matching chisel tip. You just have to fill it up a little sooner. Yep. And okay. the difference is also, these were developed for the beginner. If you look in the cap, you see those little air holes. Mm -hmm. That's in case you decide to swallow the cap, you can still breathe. <laughs> I've never tried that one, but is that really what it, what it, yes. <laughs> Love it. You guys think of everything. <laughs> the Japanese are amazing. They they like to make everything foolproof. Okay, so so a set of of um, chow. The chow. What's what's a seventy two set versus like what's the price difference? Okay. A 72 set of chow is going to run you $216 versus a 72 set in sketch is going to run you $324. Now, regular price, this set is over $500. Wow. Um, but it is a lifetime investment. Um, with my first paycheck from Copic, I bought the 72A <laughs> set back in 2002, and I'm still using those same markers today. Wow. Well, that's a good investment. Okay, let's let's see what else do we have. Move the mark the cap off for 24 hours. Then what? Is it still good? You put the cap back on, and it'll kind of rejuice. And if it doesn't, you just pull the cap, the nibs out, because you can pull these nibs out. It's very easy. Um, refill it. Maybe you have to clean out the pores of the nib. It's like dried and crusted. You would just soak this in a little. Um, a little bit of hand sanitizer or rubbing alcohol, that'll kind of clean out the pores and your marker is good as new. That's cool. So so now let's go to these little things here. It's all right, you're all right. So, okay, so we have, you've shown me some reason. Okay, so here's the uh, little blue drafting pencils, mechanical okay. pencils. So mechanical pencils are a great way for not having to sharpen because I'm lazy. But the blue pencil, you want to use that again as we were talking about with the blue line paper. You want to use this so that you don't have to erase. So this is the ultimate lazy tool. You don't have to sharpen it and you don't have to erase it. Um, these, are, these are from IC brand. It's a Japanese brand that the professional artists in Japan use. These are come with the refills and are very popular in Japan. So we feel lucky to be able to import all of the IC products. They run um, everything from dipping pens. So we have a full range of actual pen holders and nibs. Traditionally in Japan, a lot of comics are still drawn by hand and they are still drawn using a dipping pen. Do you ever use these? I do. So a dipping pen gives you a lot more flexibility than a standard inking pen that are more popular in the US. A dipping pen allows you with pressure to get a variation from thick and thin lines. Uh, whereas a standard inking pen or a lining pen, if you give that pressure, you're going to break the nib. So a good dipping pen with a nice deep black ink is really going to be your most flexible solution for doing quick drawings. Holding this pen. Yeah, this is a, you can walk I off. Wanna, oh, I, I walked off with your see, pen. You're holding pens. <laughs> oh, I know. You hold pens like you just, you know, like yeah. keys or something. Yeah, well, I, I wonder yeah. how many Who people walk, walk off, off with a pen. And, yeah. I don't have a collection yeah. next to my keys at home. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so then you got some great uh, mechanical pencils again. Yep, wonderful mechanical pencils nice from big Austria. Grip on it. Uh huh. 
Okay, and then what is this, just a different diameter? A different diameter, different feel to the body style. These are from Austria. Um, these are a high quality brand that they use for drafting and technical illustrations in Europe. So we try to look for the highest quality of whatever brands that we bring in. Copic is the highest quality marker. The IC products are the highest quality in comic drawing supplies from Japan. The Aristo products are the highest quality of drafting and technical drawing supplies from Austria. Yeah, that's great. And then you were showing me these. These oh. are cool. Never seen anything like that before. If you're gonna geek out over an art supply, this is the one to geek out over. It just feels amazing. You just wanna <laughs> rub it against your skin. This is a beautiful pencil. As you can see, it's got a six millimeter lead. We also have a three millimeter variety. Couple of different body styles. Um, a word of caution about these, we've had two of our regional instructors get these confiscated by TSA. We don't know why. It looks like a bullet, <laughs> or they were just going on a quick five-finger discount shopping spree yeah. and there are supplies. I go for the latter. So, I love these so, pencils. So you can't refill it, or where would you get a refill nope, on we've these? we've got refills right here. Okay, so we've that's really cool. Tubes of refills. So 20 bucks for the pencil and then about five for the refill? Five for the refill and, and they you, come in two sizes. Yeah, you get a few lead sizes in there. Yep. Okay. So we get the, okay, let's see. Flat This is one flat of my erasers. I've never heard of flat erasers. This one is a favorite to everyone that we show. So you've seen a regular old click round eraser. Right. That's as exciting as an yeah. eraser can be. <laughs> this one, however, is flat. So have you ever wanted to erase a single delicate line in the middle of a drawing and you don't want to do all of the right. rubbing that erases the things around it? With that flat edge, it allows you to get right. even those finest detail lines in your drawings. That's really cool. And it comes in awesome colors of pink and green. And it has refills, again. Real helpful. Okay. And tips, and then high quality erasers. High quality erasers. This is set. So this is different angles that you can just grab this it. This is like the a... most amazing eraser set. It must be amazing because I can't read a word of what it says. <laughs> <laughs> but it comes with these awesome erasers from Japan in this wonderful set, and it does amazing, wonderful things. And I wish I knew what it did. <laughs> Somebody will be able to read that? Yes, absolutely. Okay. <laughs> All right, let's get, oh, okay, now these. These screen tones. Okay, so screen tones traditionally are how you create backgrounds without having to draw the picture. So you might be good at drawing a figure, but you don't want to waste all of your time drawing the trees or getting the texture and the pattern. With a screen tone, this is a transparent sticker that overlays on your artwork. So you would carefully cut out each of these patterned areas and put it down. Why you need screen tones still today is if you are doing a black and white comic strip and you need to reproduce that on a photocopier. Modern inkjet printers produce a dot pattern that's incompatible with photocopiers because an inkjet printer interpolates dots randomly whereas a standard photocopier picks them up in lines. And so when you're working with a screen tone, it's working in a dot pattern that's lined up to match the photocopiers. So you can get all of these tones and patterns without having a loss in reproduction quality. All right. Okay. And so... Everything from grays. Flat, and then there's probably gradients too somewhere yes. in here, so how right? Many, how much of these are being used, these screen tones? In the US, people have moved more to computers. In Japan, these sell more than the markers. These are very popular. So you would cut out, maybe for an image, you would cut out just the tiniest little smidgen of it mm -hmm. um, and then save the rest right. of it. Or say you were doing a patterned dress and you needed just a close-up floral pattern, you need lightning bursts or 
strange little cherries and teddy bears. <laughs> You know, they, yeah. There are hundreds and hundreds of patterns in screen tones. So, so let's see. So it's uh, almost four dollars for a pack, and then is there just one sheet inside a pack? There's right? one sheet. You're one? But you get a lot of use. Right. Out of that yeah. One it's sheet. not just for one picture. You just exactly. use it where you need it, like on the dresses <laughs> and things. That's really cool. Okay. There she is doing it. So, and you would cut it out just at exacto, or do you have a? Special knife that you like to use. Yeah, the special All tool right. from Japan. It's a very fancy <laughs> cutting tool. It's actually I like it better than an X-Acto knife because I like the grip already. Looks it actually different. has a lid, so I can put my blades in, and then it comes with a very nice, stylish. Blade. Right, so you don't have a razor blade rolling around on your desk. All and it time. comes with a pretty good pack of replacement blades. So there's my there's my nice lid okay. for it. And then so we have the tools. These tools are for rubbing the fin finished sticker onto your artwork. Right. You get out the air bubbles and things like that. Exactly. Make sure that it doesn't come up when you run it through the copier. Okay. Awesome. What else? We're almost done. Inking pens, right? And we'll go. Well, I want to take a look at your portfolio again before we have some questions on that. Yes. Okay. Let's start all the way at the end. So here you have your refills, or not the um, refills, the uh, okay. the nibs, the tips. So most of our products are refillable with replaceable tips. All of the markers have replacement tips. If you don't like the tips that come in the marker, you can buy optional tips, or you could even take an X-Acto knife and chop the nibs down into whatever shape you want. That's good to know. Um, for our inking pens, we have some that are refillable and some that are disposable. So these are the nibs and refills for our refillable models, and we have tools for changing yeah. the nibs, sets of our refillable metal buried metal barreled markers. These come in 10 piece sets. I don't know if you can see, it's a 0 .03 millimeter all the way up to BS, which is not BS, it is brush small. Okay. In our disposable line, we do have a BM, and that's for brush medium. <laughs> not we to be- We don't need fiber. Okay. We don't need our fiber. And um, we love the abbreviations that we get from Japan. I think you did it on purpose. They they gave us our FO pens. Yeah. We love our FO pens. For, you really? They we are have an FO pens, purpose. and we you have, don't have that many. we have a PO pen as well. <laughs> yes, we get a kick out of the things Japan comes up with. So, so you have the uh, refills here. Yes. And A meaning. Okay. Like, how do what are these? Okay, so when you're refilling an inking pen, you think about the ink that's flowing through the nib. On smaller pen sizes, you have to use a thinner ink formula, or else it wouldn't it would clog the nib. And a thicker ink for your thicker nibs, because if you use the thinner ink, then it would just gush out of your pen nib. Right. So on the thinner pen sizes, you use the A cartridge, and on your thicker pen sizes, you would use the B cartridge. Okay. What's that booster down there? Right? Ooh. How does that work? All right. This booster is for refilling your markers. The bottles of ink for the marker refills are a big bottle of ink. And if you want to turn it into a syringe and inject yourself, this is how you would do it. You basically screw this onto the cap and then you can jam the needle down into the barrel of your marker and precisely fill your marker. It's just a, a cleaner, easier way? Or? Yes. Okay. Yep, yep. Okay, here we've got the two main types of inking pens that Copic has developed. We've got, we've got our disposable model, which these got me through art school, except for that teacher that I didn't get along with. <laughs> um, these are fabulous inking pens from the 0 0.03 millimeter all the way up to the BS and the BM that I was talking about before. The FO pens, the FO stands for fountain pens. Mm -hmm. So these are disposable fountain pens. 
Um, they give you that flexibility of line width, but they are disposable. Then we've got our refillable mark, or refillable pens. These come in, as you can see, a variety of colors, as well as a variety of sizes. Again, from that 0.03 millimeter all the way up to the BS. Cool. And is this just the, a difference in the tips or? Yes. So this is the original marker that Copic developed 25 some years ago. This has a fine point on one end and a nice firm snapping cap chisel point on the other end. If you don't like the nibs on this marker, this has nine different nib options from calligraphy to brush to a super fine nib. So this is a very flexible pen. And again, it has empties for you to fill with whatever thin inks you'd like to use. Okay. And these boxes down here, is this just? More sets. Okay. More sets of the inking pens. We do have these fabulous big working wide markers. They tape them closed so that people don't open them like I am. You well, that's can generous, yeah. That's huge. Three quarters of an inch wide. So these are a fabulous tool when you're doing large renderings or um, garage sale posters. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nice, nice, oh, very nice, nice garage sale poster. <laughs> yes. Sometimes my husband will pass a garage sale sign and he's like, oh, you need to make them a better sign. And he'll come home and he's like, you need to make a garage sale sign for this person. So I get out my wide markers and I make nice garage That's sale funny. signs. That's funny. So you have a, uh, an airbrush compressor here. Yes. And some people just use a can for, because just want a little spot or? Right, so Copic markers pop into a unique airbrush system. The marker goes the in. The marker goes in. Wow. We can go over here and see a demo. I want to see that because that sounds really weird. <laughs> I would have never guessed. The same marker that we've been coloring with. Here's a nice green. You go for the chisel end of the marker. Here we have the marker hooked up to this portable air compressor. It's not very loud. Oh, wait, can you do that again? Yes. Very easy. You pop it in. Boy, this, this is bizarre. I, I never knew. Push it in until it snaps. If you don't like the color, you just pull it out. How old is this? When did this come out? It's been with the company as long as I have, and I've worked for the company now for 13 or 14 years. Wow, that's amazing. All right. Okay, so you hold it like a gun, triggers on top, aim down and spray. If you get up close, you're going to get a denser spray pattern. <laughs> And then, again, to change the colors, you just pull the marker out. Wow. So there's no dumb jars? <laughs> Nothing. Oh. No cleanup. And, which is good because sometimes you just don't want to have to deal with cleaning up, especially when you're dealing with blood splatters. You want to just get that blood on there nice and quick. That's really cool. Unbelievable. So now you obviously you have to have a mask or some film that you use, right? Right. If you All want right. to get a very precise outline, you would probably mask it. Um, we have other masking films that we didn't bring to the convention, but we do carry masking films. Brandy here is very conveniently providing us with a neat stencil that you can get at any art store. Oh, that's amazing. So now how, if this was brand new, how long could you, how much area could that one marker cover before you had a refill? Well, it really depends on how dense you're spraying. If you're doing a lot of blood splatters like this, it's not going to last very long. But if you compare this area, so there's an area I colored with directly with the marker. You see that that soaks through the paper but this is a fine mist on the surface. Right. So the marker will cover more area by airbrushing it, but it works best with a really juicy marker. So it really depends on how densely you're spraying. Wow, that's really cool. So how much is this then? Let's go. If you're buying the compressor with the airbrush attachment, uh -huh. it's 250. 
which that's pretty reasonable. The compressor itself we sell yeah. for two fifteen. Yeah, and if you want to try this with a can of air, then that retails for thirty dollars. With just a little can of air, give you a flavor of airbrushing. Wow, that's amazing. That's really cool. Right? Okay, so so this just looks like a jar of paint. So it's a special jar of paint. Oh, okay. This ain't your mama's jar of paint. Opaque white is what you use for the final touches on your artwork. It's a very thick, uh, water-based sort of like a gouache but a thick gouache and you can thin it down to make it more transparent but it's used for the final touches on an illustration so we also sell it in this little bottle that has a built-in brush the larger jar you would have to use your own brush for so this is like sparkle of the eyes and that kind of thing exactly this brush is super fine if we get a close-up on my fingernail you can get cross hatching and so that's really micro is that an actual brush like hairs or it is. is it okay. i worked a couple of years with japan to develop this for artists so that we could get exactly what artists need for doing the highlights on strands of hair the glints of light on the eyes that perfect listen on those big ruby <laughs> lips as they're going for the kill <laughs> This is a fabulous product. I travel everywhere with it. And surprisingly, TSA has not confiscated my <laughs> bottle of this. Yeah, how many ounces is that? I don't know, but yeah. I never pull it yeah, out. No. <laughs> oh man, I would die. I think I'd, they confiscated all this stuff. I don't know what, what I'd do. Yeah, it's like ripping off a part of your body. These are art supplies. Yeah. This is life. <laughs> Taking your heart away from you. All right, so the last we have here, what is this? Uh, Get on that yeah. side. Have we talked about refills yet? Can I show the refill? Oh, yeah, no, we talked about it, but we didn't even uh, see the refills yet. So let's, so here they are, huh? All okay, right. so they're, now it doesn't matter the kind of marker, obviously. It's only the, the number. Same, just the number, right? All right. So a bottle of refill ink sells for a dollar more than the markers, six dollars, but on a sketch marker, this one bottle will refill a marker 12 times. So you're looking at 50 cents a refill. For a $5 product, a 50 cent refill is a really good deal. And that's why these are a lifetime investment product. To refill a marker, you always go for the chisel end. The bottle of ink has some little measurement marks built into the side of it. I don't know if those will show up on the camera very well. You wanna use about one and a half cc's of ink to fill a completely dry marker. To refill, it's very easy. You take the dropper tip and you drip it on. If you don't like that or you think you'll spill all over yourself, you simply pull the nib out and pour the ink in. And then I got green all over the nib, which that's okay. I can just scribble that off on some scratch paper and it'll be fine. All right. So very easy to refill. All right, so now are these how-to DVDs or are these, what are they? So we have a variety of DVDs and books. The DVDs are very end user specific. So airbrushing for landscape architecture, inking for comics, um, airbrushing for comics, product design. These are from Europe. So these are very beautiful product design videos. Then we have some books. We have a beginner shadows and shading book, which teaches you how to put your light and your shadows, as well as some paper crafting books. Because again, paper crafters love these markers for coloring their craft projects. Then we have a variety of kits. These are doodle kits for people that enjoy doing doodling, zentangling, they want colors and a nice, coordinating sets. So we have these as color coordinated sets in a couple of different themes. 
as well as some inexpensive chow beginner sets. That's awesome. Okay, so now, how do people buy it? Because obviously they're watching this and they're not here at the convention, so what's the best way to? Well, this is the only place that you'll get convention pricing because we are the importers for North America. But if you go to your local art store, that's where you'll get the best deals. Um, you can get them from Michaels, from Hobby Lobby, from any of your local art retailers, independent shops, Blick Art Supplies, a lot of online places. We just happen to have everything. <laughs> <laughs> so this is a place to come if you want everything at once. Absolutely. All right. Great, all right, so can we take a look at your portfolio? By all means, just thank real you. Real quick. You want, you want me to help you? All right. So since we are at a Comic-Con, I'll show a little bit of the process that a comic artist would use with the markers. Uh, here's a sketch I did for someone a long time ago of a character from Star Wars. When I'm drawing, I start with my pencil sketch. On the light table, I trace it with my fine line pens. So you can see I use a variety of line widths from thick to thin lines. Then I tend to scan in my artwork and print it out a couple of times so that I can get, I can make mistakes because there's no undo button on your original artwork. <laughs> then I come in with the markers and here I did a mini sketch just to test some colors. So I worked on layering. I always start light, build into darker colors, and then you can see where I used that opaque white to add those final glints of white on her hair and there on her outfit. Yeah, that's, that's awesome to know, that trick. The back side of the paper is almost as cool as the front side. It really shows how the markers saturate your paper and you're layering and working them. So that's the process I use for just about all of my illustrations. Going from pencil to pen, uh, printing out my line drawings, and then coloring in my line drawings. So do you, do you um, color in on the printouts and yeah. then just save it? or? Yeah, I color in on the printouts so that I always have my line drawing, especially when I'm working with difficult clients mm -hmm. because they invariably want to change a color or something like that. In fact, frequently, I will draw my pictures in parts that I will be compositing in Photoshop because I know that the client's going to be difficult and wants something moved and shifted. It's much faster to color by hand than it is to color in Photoshop. And in fact, one of our resident artists is an illustrator for Lucas Studios. She worked on Jar Jar Binks and many of the pod racers um, as well as well, she did a lot of the creatures in the new Star Wars series. Mm -hmm. And she said that all of the artists that work on the creature design for Lucas Studios, they work in marker because it's faster than the computer. And George, as they call it, they like to, he likes to come in and see yeah. their quick sketches and then they can slap the color in very quickly, but vibrantly. So marker is definitely a great step to go if you really want to hone your other skills as well. If you're good with hand drawing, you'll get better at digital. Oh, that's pretty cool to know. Hey, let's go back. Uh, uh, now the texture of this, uh, the snake skin there, can you tell us about how you did that? Okay, so this illustration I did for a client for the year of the snake a couple years ago. If you see the snake skin, this is done with the colorless blender. So I start with my colors. I start light, blend in my darks, and when I've got the tonal variation that I like, then I go back in with the colorless blender, and in this case, I'm just touching the blender dot by dot to create the snakeskin pattern. It pushes the color out of the way and creates that little outline of color. So I didn't have to draw each little circle. I let the markers create that pattern, and you can see, from the reverse of the artwork, how it's pushed the color out the back of the paper. I could come back 
and rework this illustration. Even though I drew this two years ago, I can rework the colors at any time because Copic markers are always blendable. Okay. And now the paper that you're feeding through your printer, it's not just regular... No, cheap. you want to choose one of these high yeah. quality papers that we talked well, about earlier. Um, that's why you can buy these in individual sheets. Whereas if you're just doing sketches, you'd work in a sketchbook, you don't need to run that through the copier. And you're only using a uh, laser printer, right? Yeah. Right. Yeah. So, uh, I teach comic drawing to teenagers. Oh, and you do? Anime Expo, I teach zombie drawing and character design and a number of other classes. So, at a school you teach it, or...? At other conventions and around the community, but because I work for Copic full time, most of the time I actually just answer emails. Okay. So where are you from? We're based in Oregon. Okay. Not too far? Not too far. Um, I have a tutorial blog, so actually this snake that we were looking at, you can see a full tutorial of my step-by-step -step oh, cool. on my personal blog. It's right. ilikemarkers.blogspot. <laughs> and it's got years and years of tutorials. So this would have been a tutorial from a couple of years ago. Okay. But you can run a scan on my blog for um, Snake and you'll come up with cool. this tutorial. So a lot of my illustrations in here are either for clients or for fun. But I'm trying to go for texture and pattern. And look at that. So if you look My at that, goodness. that texture was created by taking a rolled up paper towel, soaked in our blender solution, and dabbed onto my finished artwork. And how did you protect? It right? doesn't really bleed that much. Oh, wow. If you do bleed outside the lines, you can see just a hair of that. I can come back in with our colorless blender and push that color back into my wow. illustration, fixing my mistakes. That is an awesome trick. So the markers are so flexible, and it really comes down to being on the right paper. Um, here I've used some pencil to get some patterning on her kimono. A lot of subtle variations from rich, smooth blends all the way to these nice textured, detailed areas. When I draw something, I don't want people to look at it and say, gee, that's a nice marker drawing. I want them to say, gee, that's a nice drawing. Right. I want them to think about the artwork first and the medium second. So I actually hated coloring until I found Copic markers. <laughs> um, here I created the texture. I used a dish towel to create the texture on her sh sweater. It gives that it looks like yeah, it, it looks like a sweater um, and you can't do that with other markers if there's another dragon there's a happy fourth of july girl and all the way to very detailed vibrant blends on hair a little bit of Miyazaki. Uh, very smooth renderings for wood and water. Always have to have a large breasted lizard woman in your sketchbook. I've got 20. <laughs> <laughs> I've got 20. But who cares? No big deal. I want more. And you're good steampunk. So I like drawing a variety of Yeah, I was going to say. This is with that finest 0.03 millimeter. I don't know if you can catch all the details in there. A word of caution, if you're drawing with that very fine pen and you're going to shrink or enlarge your artwork, know that if you shrink your artwork, the photocopier will not pick up that fine pen size. So you have to be very careful yeah. when you're shrinking and enlarging any of your pen work. As I mentioned before, Copic markers are used for more than just comics. So they're used for general illustration. There's the airbrush used for a wonderful shark background. Um, for fine illustration, you can get, again, those patterns and textures using the blender. You can also use 
Copic markers for um, again, more general illustration. Architecture, very popular for architectural renderings, landscape architecture, fashion design. This is done on tracing paper. And what's great about tracing paper is I can build up colors from the front and the back of an illustration to get it even richer. When I go in with my colorless blender, it can erase the colors and the higher quality tracing paper, it will erase completely. Wow. So you can layer and work your colors. You can see that it really does a good job of erasing when you're working on this paper. So you have that added flexibility. Even though I did this rendering back in 2007, I could come and rework this again. And I just layer more colors, erase colors, just keep blending and mixing to get exactly what I need. Wow. So these are the professional choice. Um, along with architectural renderings, they're also popular for, there's a, one of my favorite architectural that is, drawings. That is really nice. I've never seen a prettier outhouse personally. <laughs> I give it to people as a gift and they always put it in their bathroom. <laughs> I tried to hang a copy of it in my living room, but my husband wouldn't let me. <laughs> he moved it to the bathroom. I don't know why. Um, they also use it for product design. So just a standard stapler and hole punch. We got an email a few months ago from Apple product designers. Mm -hmm. They use our markers for designing all of the Apple gizmos and gadgets yeah. that people love so much. <laughs> um, we heard from Mattel. Mattel uses the markers for designing Barbie's outfits. BMW and Mercedes, their car designers, use the markers for designing the cars that we love driving. And uh, fashion design, architecture, product design, um, comic design, as we're standing yeah, here yeah. at a comic convention. Just so many wonderful uses. It's a really a pleasure to work for a company that makes such an amazing product. Yeah, well, I know they're hugely popular, that's for sure. And uh, you'll see people using them while we're here even, you know, take yeah. a tour. I mean, to heck with working for the company. I love the product. Mm -hmm. I mean, it has made my artwork better. It's taken me to whole new levels that I feel more creative. It's freed me up in my digital work so that I'm just worrying about color correction rather than trying to get those Photoshop layers to look exactly how I want to and fussing for hours when I can come up with a sketch in an hour or so that just looks finished. Right, right. Yeah. Well, that was awesome. Yeah. You got a lot of good work there. So have you done uh, uh, illustrations for books and things? I mean, it looks like you can do so many different kinds of things. You must have done... Well, so the books actually that you saw on the shelf over there, those are my books. Uh, the paper crafting as well as the shadows and shading. I've, I illustrated a couple of children's books back when I was in high school as well as in college. I do a lot of freelance illustration. I worked for a rubber stamp company. But really my pride and joy has been working for Copic for these last 13 years. Yeah, wow. Well, that was a really cool tour. That was. That was that was, fantastic. that was above and beyond. I mean, because you see all these things, you know, and if you're in an art store or something like that, and you're like, oh, well, that looks like a neat tool, but if you don't know what it is and you don't have somebody telling you, so hopefully this has been really helpful for everybody watching, and, and that was really, really awesome of you. Thanks so much for your time. I mean, how long was this? It was, it was like an hour. Oh. Well, and my tutorial blog, yeah. it has years and years of tutorials right. on how to color. Specialist, if you send an email with a product question to Copic and North America, you will get me and I will answer your questions, and that's what I'm there for. All right, well, that's cool. And, and what was your, uh, t you, you said the uh, where, how to find you again, but oh, uh, my personal blog is I like markers at blogspot.com. Mm -hmm. um, just dig through, it's got way too much stuff, and I don't repeat myself, yeah. so just start at the beginning and work your way through my tutorials. Um, I teach workshops around the country. Sometimes I list those on my blog. But if you have a question for Copic, it's Marianne at CopicMarker.com. All right. Well, that was awesome. Thank you. Thanks again. That no was really problem. cool. Thank you. All right. We're done.
All right, we're back at the art table, and I know what you're saying, Adam, why did you cut that video short? <laughs> well, I know it was kind of long, but man, there was a lot of stuff there. That was really cool. And uh, Marianne was an awesome woman for uh, taking the time to uh, show us all of that. And uh, down at the bottom in the description, I'm going to put a link to her blog spot. You can check it out and uh, see all the stuff she has there. I know she said she has some drawing videos as well. And uh, she also can answer every question you have. That's what she does. She's there for So um, she didn't send me away empty handed either. She uh, let me try out these. These are the, the um, gray pack, the ends. And uh, that'll be cool. We'll do some videos with these two and the skin tones, which is super helpful. I mean, if you saw that Mario video I did a while back, I was trying to manufacture skin tone with different shades because I didn't have the right kind. So this is really cool. And then I picked up some um, fine lines. They had, um, let's see, this goes all the way to 0 0.03. And, uh, you know, as uh, I had a sketchbook here somewhere. I don't know where it went. You saw it in the beginning. I did some uh, fine pen stuff. And then these are cool. These are grays. Fine line grays instead of jet black. Oh, what else? Okay, I got a pad of paper here. Bleed proof. And uh, some more paper. This is larger. So we'll do some cool videos on this stuff. And uh, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments. If this was helpful to you, you know, if you like this and you want to see more of this kind of stuff too, uh, let me know. Also in the description, I'm going to put a little uh, time code link. So, you know, if you want to learn what was that, you know, about the paper or the light tables or, you know, these pens, whatever, you can jump to that section by clicking on the uh, time code link down there. Might make it helpful if you want to reference this back. But anyway, uh, we'll do some uh, fun videos in the future. I'm excited for these and uh, to get into it and let's have some fun. So we'll see you again real soon. Thanks for watching and bye.